just tickling the surface really in the back garden in terms of getting it sorted out there's so much to do and I can't really work out the uh, right kind of timings to do it because I can't really give it all my time I'm not really feeling ready to show the back garden because not much seems to change because it seems to just an hour just trying to sort things out doesn't really go anywhere it's so it's got so 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 overgrown but i'm not despondent it's just going to take a lot of work but one thing i just wanted to show you was that all these poppies have sort of seeded by themselves seeded everywhere i've got beautiful beautiful heads and the flowers have basically all fallen now but i've been just been collecting a bunch this is just from a couple of uh, just a little area of self-seeded poppies on the other side of the garden i've just picked them all or cut them all i'm going to hang them up to dry i'm going to use them probably for winter decorations or they might be useful when for some of the candle candle projects in the future to give us little old shop gifts so not sure yet but i'm certainly not going to put them all on the compost heap they are really beautiful With the roses basically finished, there's less, seems as if there's less colour in the garden, but there's the promise of more when the, these Japanese anemones come out, for example, there's a lot of buds there. And there's still some foxgloves, just some late ones, and flowers at the tops are here. And these, this cultivated burnet is in proper flower. I don't know whether it was when we last looked, I think it was in bud. So that's out now. It's a bit floppy. I wish I'd put some supports in first. It's a bit late to put them in now. So I'm just having to let it flop to a certain extent. Which, oh, see, I kicked, there we are. Last time, do you remember me saying that I always kick the devil, the stone from the devil's chair? It always dubs my toe for me. It's just done it again. Whereas the dragon stone is all cuddly for some reason, soft and cuddly. Anyway, these, are, this is something different because these are the Helleniums, which are, again, I think they were in bud last time and they're out. And there's patches of those all over the garden. So we'll see them as we come round again, another, another lot of them. And uh, the other roses are finished as well. Oh, those sparrows. They've got a lot to say for themselves, haven't they? Um, and, well, I don't think that much has changed here apart from, as I said, there's less, less colour in lots of ways. And probably these tall things have got taller. It won't be long now before these buds are actually out. And here are some more Helleniums. They are called More High and Beauty. I think they're a very popular variety. There's nothing, nothing particularly unusual about them. I think they're quite fashionable in some way, but I really like them. I think they've, they've become popular with good reason. And this is my pride and joy at the moment, the grasses. If you sit on the ground here, which I have been doing with my coffee, and you can just see them dancing in the breeze and in the sunshine shimmering it's just lovely it's just, i know it's only a little tiny patch compared to sitting in grasses out in the wild which i also like to do particularly out on the cliff top but it's just like a little patch of the wild although they are cultivated grass variety i can't remember i have no idea what they're called i did know but that's that was last year not this year 
Um, but anyway, I just think they're absolutely gorgeous, really lovely, and I would definitely recommend grasses in the garden. It seem, seems a bit of a strange thing to do to start with because you think, well, that's just like a lawn having grass, or, or even weeds when you see bits of grass coming up, which people kind of, oh dear, it's come up in the gravel, I should get rid of that, and so on. But these were actually bought as, I think, about three little plants. And they've really sort of spread across, and I guess they'll they will die down in the winter. And the, and the seed, I believe, that the grass seed heads will um, will stay. We'll see in the frost. And this is where the bird table was in the winter. So again, I said, I said last time the jury is slightly out as to whether it will go back there, or I might put it in the back garden, in which case where, where it is at the moment. Uh, it's not being used at the moment, but it's sitting there near the compost heap and I have just got it to decide what to do. If it goes in the back garden, I won't, probably won't see the birds feeding, but really being able to watch the birds feeding is a luxury. That's not the main purpose of having the bird table. It's to help, obviously, it's to feed the birds. And so, um, so I can't really be greedy and say I want to enjoy watching them. But we'll see, I don't know yet. Few months yet, really, before they're going to get really needy. I know you can, can and probably should feed them all year round, but that is a lot of food, a lot of food here. And I do give them fresh water all the time. Here's some, in fact, here's the bird bath, which they love. I'm always freshening that up for them. Well, I know what I didn't show you. The ponds. Well, I always do show you the ponds, but the pond plants I put in. Oh, I don't know. Not. Well, this, this year at some point, because the, or everything in this pond had succumbed to the winter or to something a bit strange in the, in, in, the, in the actual metal. I'm not quite sure what it was. But anyway, I put some fresh little plants in and look, I've got a flower. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I think it's loose strife, but somebody else might be able to correct me on that because there was a loose strife, which does have purple flowers. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what this one is. I, I, I divided the plants between the ponds, so I can't quite remember. Anyway, it's lovely, isn't it? Lovely to see something so happy after, really, the, the pond was just such a, um, if I'm honest, it, it just didn't look a very happy place at one point. And here's something that didn't flower at all last year when I put the, put the little plants in. It's an Echinacea pallida, and I think it has these really thin petals, and then they turn back on themselves. It's got a dancing kind of delicate dancing fairy effect. Well, that's what I think. So it's obviously just starting at the moment. So it's just one flower out of all the plants, but maybe there are some more to come. So hopefully there are. So we'll come back and look at that as, as it develops, but I thought you might like to see it because again, it's something new that wasn't here last time we looked. I love the way that the, this, the pink geranium, the sort of larger size flower there, they were the plants that I put in. In fact, I think it was one of those ones that I've mentioned before that I got from as little plants outside the place, the, the egg selling place. But the tiny little flowers, which if you're seeing them in real life, look just the same really, only tiny, tiny, tiny. They're wild, they're just there by, because they're there. And that is um, the wild, a tiny form of wild geranium which is called Herb Robert, which I'm sure is very familiar to a lot of people. It smells foxy. I really like it. But anyway, it just happens to be growing there in the bottom of the hedge right next to the cultivated geranium. And you can see how well they, they just kind of mix together and um, they seem quite happy together.
We haven't been looking at the back garden and it's for good reason, as you'll see when I bravely give you a little tour of how it is at the moment, warts and all, which I think is important to do rather than waiting for some mythical moment when it's all looks lovely and you, you know, everyone says, oh, a lovely garden. Well, you won't say that at the moment, but I thought it would be nice to show it. In fact, it's important to show it. But I'm just showing you here one of the three ponds. I don't know if you remember the three ponds video that I did, but this was, we often look at the one in the front garden, but this is the second of the three, which was always nice, really. It had never had a problem. So I wanted to take a deep breath and show you the back garden at the old shop today which is quite a contrast to the front garden in that the front garden's fairly wild, I suppose, but in a managed kind of wildness, and whereas the back has just got completely out of control, but in this totally different way from when I first saw the, ha uh, the cottage three years ago, and I will explain. And I have made loads of mistakes, so I thought I'd be completely honest about this, and it might help somebody else who uh, is worried about having made lots of mistakes and doesn't think they can put it right. And I'm trying to put mine right now. So I'll, what I want to do is I want to just walk down the path. I want to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I literally haven't tidied up at all to do this video to show you the first part of it. And I'm going to be working on it today and possibly a bit tomorrow, hopefully. And I'm going to try and make quite a bit of difference. I mean, I, I know I've said this many times. I made a little bit of difference the other day. I cut down quite a lot of stuff, uh, pulled out acres of bindweed, but there's a lot more really to do. So, what I thought I'd do, I haven't even picked up the old buckets and things that's lying around. It is literally the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, so I'll just, I just—I don't want to do a full tour either. We're telling you what every plant is or anything like that because I'm going to come back and we'll have a look at it when I've done some work and I'll kind of go through bits of the garden at a time probably. Hopefully you'll be interested to see that. I hope so. I will intersperse it with other things as well uh, so it doesn't get too much. But anyway, so let's make a start. I'll just give you, a, I won't even tell you what the background to it all is today, I don't think. I'll just show you what's here because we can do this over a few videos if you're still with me. I hope you will be. Um, so the, this is the shadier side of the garden. We've got a trellis up here, quite away from the fence, which I think in itself was probably a mistake. I used to take too much notice of other people's opinions when I was first here. I think I was fairly much in shock and I did quite, quite a few things that I really now regret because it was just easier to take other people's opinions or advice rather than really think it out myself because I tend to be very indecisive anyway. So anyway, let's not um, dwell upon that, but I'll just tell you literally the outline of what is here now. So what we have here now, we have three raised beds with wood chip between and we have a gravel path that goes up to the compost heaps which is one of my favorite things in the garden and as I say this is the shadier side and at the back there's a privet hedge well it was a, just more or less just a privet hedge which is absolutely gorgeous uh, now because it's thickened out a lot I cut it up quite a lot to start with and needs cutting again later in the summer but I don't want to lose these lovely flowers and there's loads of wild um, native species in that hedge as well which I've planted I think planted about 70 70 odd saplings so it's thickened up partly because there are other things in like for example this wild rose uh, is in there and elder as well I think the berries are just coming on I'll just have a look and see if I can find some berries to show you yes some green berries up there and lots of others, there's all sorts in there. There's hazel and field maple. I don't suppose they've all survived, but some of them have. And well, anything you can imagine, which is the native species that you can put in a mixed hedge and fruiting ones as well. Although I've got lots of fruit trees in the garden too. So we've come around here to the this side of the raised beds. I know you can hardly see where the raised beds are at the moment, but we'll, we'll go over that gradually. And in the main part of the garden, where well, I was once going to do it as an allotment style garden, which is really why I cleared it all to start with from what was here, which again, we'll do a bit of backtracking over what was here on another video. Um, I, what I'm doing now is I'm making a woodland garden. So this is inspired really by Colette at Bealton the Cottage. And if you don't follow her YouTube channel, which I expect most of you probably do, because a lot of people have said to me, oh, do you, do you know Colette? Um, you'd love her channel. And indeed I do love Bealton the Cottage channel. So I highly recommend that. I'll link that down below. 
uh, if you don't know it. Um, uh, anyway, so inspired by her work in Ireland, the west of Ireland, it's more of a challenge in some ways to keep, keep everything hydrated and get things going. Although the weeds haven't thought that at all, they've really liked getting going. So I won't go through all the, all the trees that I've planted yet, but I will just say, I'll just show you my favourite little, no, I'm not going to have favourites, a favourite little grouping, which are these five birch trees. So I've put, I had five, lots of the trees I had five of because they came in bundles of five bare root trees and they were just like literally little sticks with no leaves on at the time I got them. Uh, I can't remember what time of year it was, but it was win winter or very early spring. Anyway, the bir birches I knew would be some of the first to grow. And look, this is a fantastic one. That is, uh, that is taller than me. I'm not sure they all are. Yes, those three certainly are taller than me. The other ones, the other two are not, but give them time. And there's, I, may, I put them in a circle of five, so that I'm standing in the middle of them. Everything's really closely planted. I have no idea whether that's, whether it will work or not. I mean, this is not something I've got a lot of knowledge of at all. Uh, I'm interested in permaculture, but I want to go beyond those ideals of uh, producing as much food as you can and although there's lots of wild fruit bushes and cultivated fruit bushes in the garden um, I, I'm not going to be kind of protecting them from wildlife or anything like that it's for all of it's for all of us and again in this I was inspired by C Colette at Bales in the Cottage because she doesn't she she welcomes the fact that things get eaten by other species it's for all of us so that's that's my own um, way of thinking as well if I plant enough trees and bushes that have fruit on them then I will get some of them it's only one of me it's nice to be able to give some away but at the same time that's not my priority in terms of the garden it's just to get a lovely balance and encourage all, all beings here even snails uh, if they eat the plants one year, well, they won't the next year necessarily. They'll go on to something else or it'll be more densely planted by the next year. So they've got more to choose from. It's the idea. Anyway, um, I'm, just, we won't go, I'm very tempted to go through all the species, but I won't do that today. There are certain other fl flowers here, like these marigolds, that have just seeded themselves from last year because I did quite a bit of last year. I made a kind of temporary bed along the middle, which was a cutting garden. But I've decided not to do. I've decided not to do that again. I've just been influenced in a different way, and it's, it's, it appeals to me a lot more, really, to, to go in the way I'm going in. And I'm so excited. I have shown you the pond because this is one of the three ponds. I'll link again. I'll link, try and link in the video about the three ponds if I manage to do that. I'll give it a go. And this is the last one I did not so long ago in an old enamel bowl. As you can, and we haven't come back and looked at it again actually, unlike the, unlike the one at the front garden. But as you can see, it's really established nicely. And this plant, which I've now forgotten what it is, you can see it's in flower now which is really nice. There's, uh, this is the bed with all the bindweed in, so I won't linger on this now. And uh, Apart from, it would be nice to show you a little bit so you can see the improvement. <laughs> and this is going to be a path down here, and I'm, oh, I don't know what to do about this. I, I'm not sure, any ideas we welcomed, but um, at the moment I'm thinking of, of strimming, basically, just strimming it to start with, just to, just to create a fairly grassy path. I don't think grass will like it once the trees grow up, but to start with, I have got wood chip. There's a pile of wood chip here. This area here is going to be grass, because I want a little bit of grass, which will obviously I let that grow long and allow things like dandelions and daisies and uh, so on in it. I'm not, I'm not talking about a manicured lawn, as you might probably, probably would imagine that I wouldn't be, but I just fancy a little bit of grass just here just a little bit, uh, just to sit on and to, to the smell of grass and that sort of thing. And also I want to have a fire pit and I'll, I'll kind of put that in the centre of the grass here because this is the longest I've been without somewhere to have fire. I know I could probably sort something out, but I don't want to put it directly on these bar wood chips in the dry weather. That's asking for trouble. And this is at the moment, I don't know whether it will stay that way, but this is at the moment a sort of herb bed. This was completely taken over, which I have cleared here. There was Sweet Sicily, which is lovely herb, but not for this garden because it just took, took over to such an extent it, it smothered out things like this, which I cannot remember what it is. Um, but anyway, and I've, I've kind of rescued it by cutting out the Sweet Sicily, but it'll take a little while to recover. It, even this fig, my fig tree, which I was so excited by, and it was completely swamped with the Sweet Sicily and also, like everything else, with bindweed. 
and also a clematis here, which I don't know what it is, but it's, oh, it just takes over everything. It's not something I really encourage. I just let it, just cut it back and let it come up again and cut it back again, but it's never daunted. It's not some, I, I don't know, I've got lots of clematis. It was here already, but it's just, it's almost like bindweed, the way it covers everything. I'll just show you one of the fruit bushes. There are fruit bushes. But I want to show you this one because it's got some black currants on already. So it's like a little taste of things to come. And the same with one or two of the fruit trees have got little fruits on them. Like this pear tree has got some little pears on, or the apple trees. Only, only one of the apple trees has got a couple of little apples on, but then that's not, that's not the priority this first year. I just want to get them established and kind of get the structure in a little bit and get things planted that I've bought and not put in or collected in some way because I took some little cuttings and collected some baby saplings out of wood in the autumn, stuff like that. So all lots and lots and lots to do, hasn't been getting done. It's just really hard to, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know this if you are kind of on your own and trying to do everything and trying to work out how to earn a living and do the garden in the way you want to do it. Oh, look at that, lovely trees swaying. And have a nice home if you can, or at least, at least have it so you feel homely in it and cook good food and, and, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of things to do on your own and I'm not that good at being decisive and prioritizing either. So that's where I am. So anyway, I'll just show you, so I'll show you this now and then I will, oh, there's a lot of birds to activity, but it's mostly pigeons at the back here at the moment. I do have other birds. I've had herons flying over, often have the buzzards flying over quite low. Uh, so one of these times I'm showing you the progress, we'll get some exciting sightings, I'm sure. I've been getting those weeds out, but it becomes more difficult here, which was all earth. And now it's just all um, ground elder and creeping buttercup and it's completely dense so that's why I think it might be better just to strim it and allow it to be just grassy and then uh, when as the trees grow I think they will shade out grass anyway and it'll become more like a woodland path with the leaf fall is what I think anyway and there's lots of lovely shady shade loving plants behind under the weeds there I've got lots of things like hellebores and lungwort and um, geranium, those sort of hardy geraniums that spread everywhere hopefully and make nice ground cover but again lots of work to do to free all that lot give it all freedom which is I, uh, what I hope to do in the next well I won't say I'll do it all in two days that would be not be realistic I won't be doing that but oh look there's an apple this is a cooking apple an old variety called cat's head because the apples are meant to look like cat's heads so they're elongated I think perhaps because this is a new one, this is his first year, it's not necessarily, it's just like a baby tree, so it's not necessarily quite how it's going to be. The tree that's got the most, uh, already got the most fruit on it, was bought more as, as a tree than just as a little bare root, which is probably why it's established quickly. But it's another pear tree. And it's interesting, there's an old saying, which is plant pears for your heirs, meaning that your pears will not come very quickly. They'll take years before you get pears, whereas other fruits you will come sooner. But in fact, it's the two pear trees that got by far, by far the quickest to, um, see if I can probably get a, focus on that one there we are look I mean I'm, to give you scale it's not big that's my hand but it, it is still there it's still pear shaped it's still very exciting and I grew a clematis up which is this tree and that has really taken nice this little white one scented one I can't disentangle it from the tree from the hedge behind it but I don't mind that it's the it's really the the bindweed and there are loads of nettle I've taken out lots of nettles I want to keep some nettles of course for the wildlife, for the red admirals and so on, but there will always be nettles. So I'm not, I'm not going to keep every single nettle. I want to be able to walk around and I want to be able to plant more trees. So there we are, that's where I am at the moment. As I say, I haven't moved anything. You'll see a black bucket on its side there and the shed, which I haven't talked about, but that's another of my disaster decisions probably. Um, but anyway, it's been reclad. It needs finishing painting, but the person, handyman who was doing it is one of the many people who've jumped ship very quickly without warning and so it's been left unfinished and it's not necessarily easy to get up on that roof and paint uh, it will be nice I don't, I've just got to work out a way of doing that but I will do it 
and it will be lovely then and the, the, my favourite things are actually as, uh, attached to that which are the two wind chimes and there's another one around the side I've got three wind chimes which I absolutely love but we'll go we'll talk about those all those other things more soon and I've got a little nook I'm going to make into a little sunny nook which is full of nettles and flints and old flower pots and stuff at the moment and canes but I'll sort that out as well so anyway there we are <laughs>